so. Uh, we will, yeah, if you don't mind, just, just scooch those in here. Hey, everybody. First of all, uh, thank you for having me at Zero Day. Uh, so I want to say thank you so much. You guys, you guys were hot. So I don't know if I'll be here on a regular basis, but uh, maybe, maybe they'll invite me back. Uh, visually, you'll notice that I'm a very large person. Uh, I have been almost 500 pounds at one time. When I, uh, when I played college football, I weighed just under 300 pounds. So today I hover somewhere, depending on how many pizzas I eat, uh, hover somewhere between about 310 to close to 350 pounds. Most of those pounds are sexy, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> today we're going to talk a little bit about big people beds. I'm going to explain my concept and why, why I feel it's viable. Um, then we'll transition uh, into the Kickstarter aspect. So big people struggle today when they go buy a mattress Within a year to two, the mattress ends up like this. So they literally are sleeping in a hole. Many of you are far more physically fit than I, so you probably don't know that. But uh, the average person buys a mattress every eight to ten years. Um, big people are stuck buying mattresses one to two years if they're going to get any quality sleep. One of the things about sleep that most people don't realize, so this will help you, uh, if you don't get proper sleep, all the chemical aspects of your body don't work the way they're supposed to. So insulin levels, all those type of things uh, create problems. Well, when you're heavy and your, chemical, your chemistry is not right, it makes it extremely difficult to lose weight or even maintain weight. So it's lack of sleep, accelerated weight gain. Okay? Also, people that are heavy, stress over their weight. I can't hide my weight, so as soon as I meet you, you know I'm heavy. Uh, so it's stressful. So your stress management with a lack of sleep becomes a problem. So we have designed a line of mattresses that are mechanically better for big people and that's essentially what we're pitching. Uh, in, a, in the real world you have to pitch products and so we have to have a product to exist but we also want to help people, educate them about proper sleep, even educate them about why their weight gain exists. So in the Kickstarter aspect, which I'm going to pass over in a minute, we have a line of pillows that we've developed with some partnerships that really help big people sleep better at night because big people struggle with their physical size laying on their side and where their head is positioned in relation to the pillow. These products are latex. You'll find that most of the products in the mattress have latex within them. So uh, it's kind of a... Uh, a fantastic product for large people because it doesn't degrade as, as simply as foam does. So part of it, what we've also found is that normal sized people like most of you in the room benefit from these pillows as well. And that's where the Kickstarter element will come in. So I'll pass over to you as to what your plan is with Kickstarter on the technical side and then you guys can grill us either product wise or, or technical side. Can we pass some of this around? Yes, you got a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, latex allergy, yeah. Let me mention, actually, that's a great point you brought up. Uh, your body will never really actually interface with the latex. Here, yes, so please don't touch it if you do. But the, the latex will be inside the product or inside an encasement. So you'll have no skin to latex contact with any of the products. But if you are allergic to latex, don't handle this because this is raw. This is the inner, the inner core. So. All right. Thank you. What I'm supposed to do here is kind of take this whole idea, this whole concept to Kickstarter. And so I have kind of a lot of questions about it. Um, basically, 
I mean, I know we're not going to go on Kickstarter until, you know, 2,000 of our benefits. I mean, obviously not. But um, with the pillows, um, the, originally we were kind of trying to market them to big people, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that that, like, <laughs> kind of a question I want to ask you guys, is that limiting our, is that like filtering out people who are potential customers, or is that a strength? that we have by like having a specific niche because um, I mean I know on Kickstarter not necessarily a user is gonna gonna be like a big person, you know. So what like does anybody have Let me interrupt you for a minute. How many of you know a big person other than me? How many of you have a big person in your life? Hey, you are one. All right, we rock. But you know, how many of you know a big person and how many of you if you heard our heard our Kickstarter and heard about this pillow, would you buy it for a big person in your life as a gift? How many of you would? Okay, so maybe that's, maybe or that's. Support it. Yeah. Or support it, yes. Yeah. I, I don't think about that. Um, I don't think it, it's necessarily limited to, uh, to like people that have like a big person in their life. But I think an interesting concept that like, it might be worth exploring is insurance companies that are affected directly by the stress that mm -hmm. has health repercussions mm -hmm. would really, really benefit from a mattress like this, supporting it in some way or advertising it, mm -hmm. because then they don't have to charge their customers higher mm -hmm. because their health will be much better. Mm -hmm. And I think if you work your Kickstarter that way and you specifically advertise every single health benefit that it has, you're gonna find a much broader scope because I don't think it's necessarily limited to individuals that have a big person in their life, but also businesses that have to pay health insurance or like are taking care of like mm -hmm. unnecessary health repercussions that could be easily fixed by this. Country. I actually bought uh, bigpeoplebillofrights.com because <laughs> you know as a big person I go rent a car. You know, no offense, I came here today. There was probably only three chairs that I felt comfortable even sitting in. You know, n n like I said, no offense, because when you're big, you have to think about those things. You know, when I was really big. I was concerned about sitting on someone's couch when I went to their home because I might break it, literally, you know, so. so just a quick question about where the business is at now. Are you selling these mattresses? We we're only in the prototype uh, phase, okay. so we've got them out in the field, people using them, I sleep on them. Uh, yeah. So, but we started the project in January yeah. and we would, like, we would like to get the Kickstarter off the ground now, now that we have a, a proven product. You know? Okay, and so the Kickstarter for the pillows is a, is a marketing it's a tool to, to It's a perk. It's a what I found about Kickstarter is that people have a threshold. You know, nobody's just going to be like, hey, here's a thousand bucks, you know, or somebody's not going to buy a $2,000 or $1,500 mm -hmm. mattress. So the pillow is a perk for a broad sense. Yes, it helps right. big people, but you could buy one and, and right. love it and absolutely love but the it, pillow. It, it is a marketing vehicle for the bed. Yes, okay. yes. So the Kickstarter will actually be for the bed. But the, the neat part is it's big people beds, so it covers anything related to the bedroom, yeah. if you will. Okay, cool. No, that just helps. What's the, uh, what's the weight on what you would consider a big uh, up to Up what to 500 pounds. You, but like starting at? Well, you know, uh, what, you, what, you find, what you find is that a person at 150 pounds could technically be a big person. Because... Depending on how tall they Yes, are. yes. Well, then I think that you don't want to Yeah, you know, like I, I mean, what are the other benefits of it that would benefit Exactly, anybody? like, I, that, that's why I kind of wanted to present it to you guys because I've been kind of struggling with it. Like, is it something that if we put it out there as for everybody, then we'd be, you know, just another product in a sea of, like, a bunch of sleep products because there's a bunch of sleep products. But what about the indestructible bed or something like that? Exactly, mm -hmm. that, that's what I've been talking about because it's got a 10-year warranty on it and there's not really a bed that, that'll be like, yeah. When I approached the manufacturer, when I approached the manufacturer, the, the very first thing they said to me was, well, what do you expect? You know, what do you expect from us, from a, from a use standpoint? And I said, well, I just want a comparable experience to what someone buying a mattress of normal size would get. And that's about an eight to 10 year cycle. We're not going to promise this thing's going to last. If you're 500 pounds, you and your spouse, both of you are 500 pounds, we can't build a product that's going to last more than 10 years. I mean, it, it's just not possible. Today, Does maybe in the future. Yes, if you're an average sized person, obviously it's going to last considerably longer. And if you buy the product that flips, my goodness, it literally could last a lifetime. Because I, I would see big people bed and I go, okay, next. You know, I mean, 
instantly right. your just because of the right. name. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I don't know, maybe marketing something that mm-hmm. says it's indestructible or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like indestructible movies. or like a ten year or you know, the last page in Pillow you'll have like five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like now we have a, we have a another another line which I didn't come to talk about. It's called curvy girl beds designed for real women because there's a, a movement now, there's a lot of girls that aren't this, you know. And so a lot of girls don't want to buy a big people bed, so we have a line as well called the curvy girl. Yeah, I, think that, that I think that there's a lot of people who, I agree with, with Bill, that all, like he was just saying, that there's a lot of people who just think, well, I don't need that. Yep. So I think the, like, durability is the, the biggest sell, and it's a huge, That's a great sell. Right. But if I saw like, hey, I can invest in this awesome bed. It's going to last a super long time. It's going to hold up great. It's not going to get rickety or sunken down or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it can yeah. support up to such and such like weight without being. I think that's great. I, but I agree that name or, or selling it. No, <coughs> I don't. I know, I'm not saying that no one will be interested in it, but I think there will be a number of people who would say sure. well, that's well yeah. some stats so, to, to go along with what you're saying some stats um, there are 155 million Americans that are overweight there are 80 million that are considered obese so take a take a gander at that you know the population is 300 plus right so obesity is literally a pandemic not an epidemic it's it's nationwide and other countries are now experiencing it too our focus is the US so when you look at that, there were $13 billion spent last year on mattresses, $13 billion. And so if you look at those two numbers I gave you, 155 million overweight and 80 million that are obese. So you look at that market and you realize that it, it, it will, there will be a lot of people that, that can benefit from the product. Yeah, but um, flipping it, um, that's like half. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah so for sure. I, I for sure. I would be interested to, I think you should survey some people mm-hmm. and ask around mm-hmm. to big people and, you know, not big people mm-hmm. because the market for big people is huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pun intended. If you... <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you if you open it up to try to sell like the next invincible bed to everyone, yeah. you run the risk of commoditizing your product into like all the other miracle sleep products that are True. out there on the yeah. market. Agreed. So I think that even though I wouldn't buy that, if I knew, I think that the thing that really caught my attention was the health benefits. Yes. And if I knew that and I knew someone who would really benefit from that, yes. I would absolutely tell them about it. Yeah. But I think that's because it of the of the way you targeted that message. Not mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm gonna try and sell you an invincible mattress because <clears throat> that's cool, but you know, if I already right. have a mattress and I'm not gonna buy one for another five years, right. then And for me to prove it to you, you'd have to wait <coughs> twenty five or thirty years to find out that it wasn't exactly. invincible, right? Exactly. Yeah. So where if you knew there was some health benefit for your friend yep. who was big, yep. you, would, you would, on social media, deliberately make sure that sure. They, they saw so it. I think that there's some utility to exploring the targeted market. Mm-hmm. I had a concept, as I studied, as I studied uh, Kickstarter, I had a concept. Has, has anybody ever had a Kickstarter within a Kickstarter? In other words, let's say that this product was a $2,000 <laughs> product, and you had a friend, but you were willing to contribute $200 for that person to get that mattress, but you weren't willing to contribute 2,000. Right. Has anybody ever attempted that, that you know of in Kickstarter, where you could fractionally buy the product for a friend as a gift? We you kind of did something like that. Um, my band I was in did a Kickstarter, raised $15,000, and ultimately they were, I mean, in a way, it's kind of what you're saying, they were paying into the finished product, yes. and I got a finished product. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can see it work. I, uh, I know it's not working out well for him, but Dodge 
had this whole idea that we're going to start selling cars and have people buy into features of the car. So somebody would go on and say, I want this new Dodge, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And Joe, your friend, can come on and donate $200 to, to your radio. Yeah. or Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty neat. I don't think it's been a huge success. But yeah. I agree exactly with what Eric's saying. It kind of reminds me of a, you ever heard of Yeti coolers? Yes, yes. So this is kind of like a Yeti cooler to me. Um, you know, it's just this, these super expensive coolers, if you guys don't know it, they were made for like hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. And they're like super heavy duty. I mean, you can keep like ice in there and it stays cold for like a week. Yeah. Um, and like bear, they have all this stuff, like they have literally have grizzly bears attacking them. And the grizzly bears cannot like damage get it. in or damage yeah. the coolers or anything. So it started in this whole kind of hunting and fishing industry, but I started to notice now you have normal people spending four hundred dollars on a cooler. Right. And but they've taught they went after the specific target market. You're going into Alaska mm -hmm. in a plane mm -hmm. and you need to have your food last and your ice last for an entire week and you don't want the grizzly bears to attack it and mm -hmm. messed up. Mm -hmm. Well guess what? There are not that many people who fly into Alaska mm -hmm. and need to not have their coolers attacked by grizzly bears or damaged by grizzly bears, but now it's like everybody hears about it. You gotta have the best cooler, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, plus, you know, plus, day. I'm the size of a grizzly bear, so it works yeah, out. Exactly. Well. Works so, out. So I don't know. I, I see it as that, that type of thing. If you, if you target this one uh, one demographic, then I mean, I think you see that with stuff like GoPro. I mean, heck, I've seen grandmothers with GoPros. Yeah, all yeah. Of like yeah. you know, the most extreme, you know, sports mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And now, it, now it's everywhere. So yeah. I go after uh, really heavy people. I, I played college football and there were a, a lot of guys that were much smaller, but they still considered themselves a, a big man, you know. Uh, so I think, I think there is a market too for people that aren't necessarily fit a certain pound requirement, but they really want to have a big person bed because they are a big person, you know. So. And I think you can tell those stories. Mm -hmm of the not big people using the bed mm -hmm. to go after those markets, but I think your primary focus would be, at least in the mm -hmm. beginning, to start out. Yeah. The, well, um, now what kind of technical questions did you have? Did you have some? Oh, well, just one other comment. I, I guess I see them as, I see these two products as quite different, and I think this product, I don't know what your, what your name is for it or what mm -hmm. you're marketing it as, but to me, this is a much broader market in terms of, I mean, as Chandler can attest, any third trimester woman will do anything nah. to sleep better. Yeah. You know, could this pillow oh, wow. yeah. help yeah. that? That's a good idea. Uh, could an allergist look at that pillow and say, you're going to, and a person with severe allergies will experience 90% less dust mites in their pillow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to poly pillow feathers. Right. Like, could, could you have, could you pitch that pillow in a bunch of different ways like that, that you could open up to a broader market and to lower price points and it's easier to do that? As opposed to yeah. The reason we brought the pillow into the Kickstarter mix for this is right. because it is within a price that somebody will pay up to a hundred dollars. You know, yeah. so that seems to be the threshold in Kickstarter yeah, so for I the perks. I would, I would focus on that, and, and I feel like that would color your pitch in, in Kickstarter to make it too confusing mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. But this is a much broader audience. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of shifting gears a little bit because we're running out of time. Um, right now, the way we have it set up um, is basically you go to or I've set up a new new Big People Beds website. It's not on the domain yet, it's on a subdomain because we got like some shopping cart. Um, integration. Yeah, integration, Woo Commerce. Issues. Yeah, um, so uh, right now we're, like there's our distributor website that's it's based off of Shopify. And so we're using a WordPress site to run like the Big People Beds site. Um, and so in terms of like selling the items on the website, we have it so on each item, you can click on a widget that once you select your product and everything, it takes you to, you know, it, it takes you to the Shopify cart and everything's in there. Um, has anybody ever seen like a WooCommerce site that was basically like one central site where everything's sold from, but then there's like three or four like sub sites that all pull from the same products and they order through the same. So instead of, it being a, instead of being an affiliate, situation it's more of you come to big people beds and you can buy from American Dream Crafter and we, we want to set up a WooCommerce site but we'd like you to basically make the purchase but at the stay end on the same but stay on the same website but pull from, from so you it. Could, like on three different you know locations you could buy something and you're staying in that website but then, but they're all coming from one central place. Because we have it's Curvy Girl, we have big people beds, like we have other URLs but we'd like it all to come from one one purchase. 
side wouldn't go to the other side. They would, they would that would be the preference. The they would just stay in the site, complete the transaction, and it shows them that they're buying it yeah. from American Dreamcrafter, which is our main company. Yeah. But they've stayed on this site through, say, a Wo WooCommerce or Shopify. Well, um, it's very similar to what eBay used to do when I was on it. Uh, man, eBay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Sounds like a drug when I was on eBay. <laughs> but uh, it's yeah. great, man. Yeah. <laughs> I but loved after it. You would, after you would follow certain products, after you would buy them, at the bottom it would like do two, the two things. First it would show you different products from the same uh, seller, mm -hmm. and then it would show you products on the same like market of it. Mm -hmm. So I really do think it's possible, because if eBay came out with it, yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would say two things. One is I would look at uh, diapers.com, yo-yo.com, soap.com, wag.com. Those are all, they're all owned by Amazon now, uh -huh. but it's all one site. If you look at the top, it's all different different um, tabs aimed at pet owners, moms. I see. So you, 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 you feel that you're on one site, even yeah. though you're technically you on can, you, that, It's a little different from what you're saying, but it's, it'll give you one idea. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would say is the only one I know of, because I, I do this, because I sell wholesale and retail mm -hmm. from the same back end, and I only have one solution that can do it. And I can share that with you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, for a price, for a small fee. No, it's called AmeriCommerce, and it, it's 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 the only solution I could find. This was a year ago mm -hmm. that, that allows you to run multiple front ends from the same pool of data on the back. Okay. That's, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's it, guys. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right, don't steal my pillows. Thank you. <laughs>